So let's say that the delta u from a to b to c is 8 joules. What would be the delta u from a to d to c? Not negative 8 joules, but just 8 joules. What would be the delta u from A to X to C? Yeah, even though I haven't told you where X is, it doesn't matter where X is. Remember that for a state function, all that matters is the initial and the final points. All that matters for a state function is initial and the final. It's a complete waste of time to even write in these middle letters over here. We don't even need the middle letters for delta u because all that matters for delta u is the initial and the final points. Maybe I should have added that as one of the definitions for a state function. Remember, that's what it means when you're not path dependent. If you're not path dependent, you mean all that matters is the initial and the final points. We should add that as part of the definition here. This, if, it's, if it doesn't depend on the path, what does it depend on? It's only dependent on the initial and final points. So when you're working with delta u, you should try to get out of the habit of even putting in these middle letters. We don't need the middle letters. All that matters is that these are all from a to c. So even though I didn't even tell you where x was, you know that from a to x to c must still be 8 joules. Now, how about the work from A to B to C, and compare that with the work from A to D to C. Are those going to be equal? No. no. Which work is bigger? B, A, and C. Because that has the greater area under it, again. So we definitely cannot leave out the middle letters for the work. The middle letters are very important here because they tell us what path we're going on, and non-state functions are path dependent. Okay. And I haven't been showing it, but by the same token, Would the heats, would the heat transfers be the same or different for these two different paths? Different, because heat is also path dependent. Different paths tend to give you a different heat. The only thing that's path independent in this equation is delta u. By the way, if the delta u from A to C is 8 joules, what do you think the delta u from C to A would be? Now this is going in the opposite direction. Right? This would be, now we're going to put in the negative 8. Because this does not have the same initial and final points. It has the flipped initial and final points. So it can be different. Here the initial point was A, but here the initial point is C. So these delta U's don't have to be equal. However, if you just flip the initial and the final points, then you're just going to flip the delta U in the sign. So what would delta U be from C to D to A? And what would delta u be from c to x to a? Yeah, again, it doesn't matter what the middle letters are. I didn't even bother drawing x because it doesn't matter where that is. All right, that's another point we haven't talked about. If you flip the initial and the final points, you, um, you get the negative of the original answer. Let's try this problem. 
Let's say that the work that's being done by the gas from A to B to C to A is 8 joules. So where are we starting here? A. And where are we ending? A. Yeah, I'm going from A to A. Sorry? It's a cyclic. That's important, yeah. This is a cyclic process. Which of these, and how did you figure that out? Uh, if delta mu has to equal zero, then to, in order for Q to balance out the eight mm -hmm. of the work Y, it would have to be negative. So did you use the first equation or the second equation? I used the first one, so I should use the second one. Yeah, because actually if you use this first equation, you, you might get the wrong answer. So we should say zero equals Q. Since we're focusing on the work done by, mm -hmm. we might as well use this equation. And that would give us this. Good. And then what did Q come out to be? Eight. Yeah, that was your answer. That was correct. Okay. By the way, even if I hadn't told you that work was being done by the gas, you should still have been able to figure out that on net work was being done by the gas. How can you tell that work is being done by the gas here? When we go from A to B to C to D to A. So even if I hadn't told you this, you could still have figured out on your own, this represents work done by the gas, which tells us this is going to be the more e convenient equation to use over here. Well, it looks like you already figured out the key idea. So remember that we're trying to go through all the different special cases, although we're only going to get to some of them today. We've seen isobaric and isochoric, and new, our new type of special process is cyclic. How can you tell? How did we know when we were doing isobaric? Well, that would give us a horizontal PV curve. Right? And how did we know when we were doing isochoric? That was a vertical PV curve. So how do you know when you're doing a cyclic process? Well, that's when the PV curve comes back to itself. When the PV curve comes back to the same place it started. Remember, when the initial point is the same as the final point, that would be a cyclic process. That really got to have more than one segment. So this is more complicated maybe than we've seen before, because earlier we were just doing curves of one segment. But this would usually have multiple segments to come back on itself. Now, when we have a cyclic process, you've already figured out that tells us directly, does it tell us directly delta U, Q, or W? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, no, delta U. Would be? Zero. And then what happens to these equations? Well, the easiest equation is that the work done by the gas equals Q. But what if work is being done on the gas? What would happen to this equation? How does this equation simplify? Um, Q. Okay, so you have to be careful about which equation you're using. The Q is equal to the work done by the gas or the negative of the work done on the gas for a cyclic process. I think we saw earlier that when we worked with a constant volume process, W was zero, and all we had left was U and Q. Well, now we're working with a case where delta U is zero, and all we have left is Q and W. So you can see those types of special cases that we're going with here.